Welcome to TransLogic, brought to you by Chevrolet. I'm Bradley Hasemeyer. When most people think hybrids, they think Toyota. And there's a lot of car companies out there that would love to snag that title. So today we're here to find out about the new plug-in Prius, a car that Toyota hopes is going to help them maintain that title for years to come. Up. Down. All right, so we're here with Mary in front of the new plug-in Prius. Mary, thanks for being with us. Yeah, you're welcome. Glad this to be here. This is cool, yeah. So tell me why this is different than the regular Prius. The plug-in Prius has been outfitted to kind of give you the best of both worlds, so you can run on EV, and then it just becomes a regular third-generation Prius. You can run the car up to 60 miles per hour on a freeway and still be in EV mode. Last Prius, you could really only get like 14 miles an hour before it would kick over. Exactly. Yeah. You have an infrastructure that's being built out. Charge it up at night when you come home. Charge it up when you go to work. Most commuters are completely covered in terms of working commute. In prior Priuses, you've used a nickel metal hydride. Now you're using lithium ion. What's up with the switch there? Well, lithium ion batteries add a lot more density uh, to store the energy in. The battery pack has three sub packs and it reserves that third pack so that you always have, as a minimum, the ability to drive the car as a hybrid. Vehicle. Right, because you don't even have to charge the car up if you don't want. All right, so you guys have changed to lithium ion batteries and you've added two new packs. So that's gonna obviously add more weight to the car. Exactly, it adds about 300 additional pounds when you look at the additional system requirements right. to support the plug-in. Optimization has been made to other elements of the car. You get the same gas mileage as you would with a Prius that isn't oh. a plug-in. So for years now, I would say that Toyota is synonymous with hybrids. I mean, the Prius has just taken the markets by storm. But what happened in the electric world? I mean, now we've got the Leaf and we've got the Volt and those kind of things. It seems like it vaulted you guys a little bit in technology. Or is this now a reaction like, oh, we got to come out with something? Or what, what, what's the thought behind this? We've invested about a million dollars a day in this technology. A day. We are very dedicated. Yeah. We come to market with both the plug-in, the City EV in 2012, a fuel cell hybrid in 2015, and the technology that's in this car will carry through our whole broad hybrid strategy. With Tesla, Toyota hopes to bring a second electric vehicle to market in 2012 as well. You could become Toyesla. <laughs> Just a thought. So according to the gauge at the front here, we've got about 12 miles of EV range. We're in EV mode, but if I accelerate aggressively, you can hear the engine kick in right there. That pedal's not all the way down to the floor, so it's a little bit discouraging because they're talking to us about, oh, you can hit 60 miles an hour in EV. I think it must take you a long time to get to 60 miles an hour if you can't push the accelerator down very far. Do -do 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 a turtle just passed me. A baby doing the crab walk just passed me. I mean, there's no way that I would drive this slow. Now, if I kind of kick it down a little bit more to how I would drive, the engine just turned on. So when we really stomp on it here, the EV is pretty much out of the picture and we're just going on normal Prius hybrid back in the HV mode. So really, Toyota's got to be hoping that the EV mode is meant specifically for people who are just kind of commuting a little bit here and there, city driving, not going to be doing major interstate speeds, but every little bit helps. So something else you'll notice once you get in the car is that the interior has a little bit more of a futuristic kind of look to it. I mean, the way the gauges are laid out, it's really ergonomically awesome. In addition to having all these great things at my fingertip, I also have eco mode and power mode. Now, just like in the normal hybrid, if you switch it to eco mode, you'll notice there's more regen. It's a little bit uh, more sluggish. If you click over to power, a little bit sharper responses, that kind of thing. If you're in EV mode only, however, and you use both of those, there's really not much of a difference. Another helpful gauge that comes with the car is the EV driving ratio. 
again, you just toggle through the display and up comes a graph that shows you percentage of EV and a percentage of HV or the hybrid vehicle. Something that could be confusing between this car and the regular Prius is that the battery graphic in a regular Prius, as you drive, it starts to deplete, but then there's moments when it can start to fill up again because you're using regenerative braking or other elements to the car that are putting charge back into the batteries. Now, when you deplete the EV mode in this, your battery starts to click down, just like you see in the normal display of the Prius. However, it's not gonna build back up again because when you deplete all the EV element to this, it's gone. You can only recharge that by plugging it in the wall. The car itself will not regenerate enough energy to build those batteries back up. Now it will maintain your hybrid level and it'll keep going and functioning as a hybrid so you don't have to worry about that, but it's not gonna actually give you more battery energy and take you back up to the top. You gotta plug it in to do that. Well, that's it for the plug-in Prius. I wanna be honest with you. Adding a 14 mile electric range to an already efficient car, little underwhelming. But with Toyota's proven track record and the fact that they're working with Tesla, well, this leads us to believe this is just one small step with bigger things to come. That's all the time we have for TransLogic. I'm Bradley Hasemar. Thanks for watching.